Hello, everybody. Happy a couple days after Christmas. So glad to see you all here. I see Philippa. Anne is back. Uh, Michelle, Sue Fiber Art, Margaret, Andrea. Lovely to see you all today. Hope everybody that celebrated Christmas had a nice holiday. And if you didn't, hope you just have had a great week since the last time I was here. Let's see. Let's switch some cameras around and try this view. Hey, Regina. Hi, Jackie. Uh-oh, is there no sound? Um, let's see. Sound check. I don't have um, Terry here to do my sound check for me. Can you hear me? Somebody let me know, please. I don't know what's going on. Waiting for somebody to let me know. Um, okay, Sandy can hear fine. So Sue Fiber Art, um, hopefully, hey, Barbara, Sue Fiber Art, um, it might have been just a little bit of the delay. Uh, also, make sure you are in live chat, not top chat. That's my reminder to everybody. Whew. Okay, I thought maybe in all my own craziness this morning that I messed something up, which would not have been too much of a surprise. So, okay. Hey, Regina, I don't know if I said hello. Hey, Riri. What have I got here? I have got circles, more circles, because we had... I'd started playing with this thing and I thought, well, let's give us something else to look at. And I was just kind of still exploring different ways I could do circles and I wanted to show something um, and I needed some pages. So I put these guys together. They're just tacked down. This is just making some circles out of some sari ribbon. And this was just taking some wool and just making some more circles. Hey, Veronica, her first live. Please say welcome to Veronica, everybody. So glad you could join us. And I just couched down some fibers here. For another circle, I just cut out some silk. And then I have my rings. And you made it, Joanne. Nice. And I don't have um, Terry or Gail today. Terry is sick. She got COVID for Christmas, which is no fun. And Gail is off celebrating with a grandson. So that's nice. Um, but I have Barbara, right? So Barbara, I'm not worried about links just in case we had any weird stuff happening today. And I'm just going to kind of play with, I, I just want to get the pages done so I can show another way to put a structure of a book together. Hey, Sherry. And you guys let me know how your, your holiday was, how your week was. Um, I'm just going to kind of, I'm just going to kind of play. <laughs> I had uh, a little, oh, I will show you before I start playing. I will show you something. I'll show you two somethings. Here is the cover for the triptych book. Yeah, just, you know, I don't, we seem to be doing pretty well with the, um, with the issues on the trolls and stuff, since I made some changes in my settings, my customized settings. So I think that helps. And then here are my inside pages and I love them, but <laughs> you can't see very much of the lace. So I think I'm gonna have to make another one of these. Um, but I, I'm at the point now and I think I'm gonna add beads to the inside pages, but I don't think I'm gonna put any beads on the cover. And so my goal is on this, you're distracted because you're drawing a deer. Well, that's fine. Like I said, I, I think we should be fine. Hey Lee, how are you? Nice guts, yeah. <laughs> and then I'm, I'm just gonna put it together like this. Oh, I can already see one issue. Okay, it's fine. It's fine, it's all gonna come together. And I just, I just want the feel of this just feels so good, but I did call it lace and you can't see that much of a lace thing. So I'll probably have to make another one and that's fine. Cause the next one I make, I'll make sure I've got lace on the cover as well, but that's what I'll be working on later. 
All right, and now I just did something with my needle. Ah! What did I do? Did I get it stuck in here probably? I tell you, a Monday on a Wednesday, no fun. Okay, no. Well, at least I know the needle has, oh, there it is. I just, I was actually clever and put it off to the side. Hello, Kate, Kathy Cowell, or do you want to be Kate? Calico Kate. All right, I am just going to, um, just got some simple things that I want to do on here. Do I need to bring you down? I don't think I need to bring you down any. I'm not doing anything um, really crazy right now. I'm just going to kind of, and these are just some different rings I had. I just want to couch the rings down. And then on this one, I'll do some stitches around and then maybe some French knots. And I just wanted to, um, like I said, I just wanted to get some pages together. All right, this might not have been my favorite choice for this because this one's going to take a while. Oh, thank you, Barbara. So there's a streamathon. All right, well, then I'm not going to worry about trying to do any kind of streaming on New Year's since there's a whole bunch of other people doing things and I don't need to take away from them. That's great. I saw some, some things going around about people doing some New Year's streams. I thought I was going to do some more, and I just really trying to, um, hmm, this may not be the best thread for doing this. Oh, well, just go with it, right? I got some uh, good books for Christmas. I definitely need to, okay, this is definitely not the one to be doing this with. All right. Sometimes you just got to try. This was a new thread. And I think rather than frustrate myself, I am just going to cut it off and start with something else. I'll save that thread. It's a wool thread, but it's really kind of slubby, so probably not the best. Start Saturday morning, goes through Sunday afternoon. Couch down means tack down, yeah. And what I want to do, um, wait a second, here, let me get this knot out. I, just, I have a lot of videos to make, so I, I wanted to do some more streams, but I have so many videos that I want to get done so that I can just have them in the waiting to be edited mode. So what I'm doing with those rings is what I did here is I had a ring and then I just covered it with threads. Barbara said, I got some HIMI gauche paints for Christmas. My favorite enabler, Canadian McDonald at Carol McDonald at Canadian Artist. Yes, that's wonderful. I got some graphite pencils that I am really looking forward to playing with. Okay, I'm going to use my thicker yarn on here. And I got some great books and I got... Um, an assortment of felting needles. I only had one size and I wanted some different sizes. So I got those, which is great. And then we got a uh, wildlife cam so I can finally set something up outside where I'm always posting over on Facebook about um, the different birds that we have coming. And now hopefully we can have a stream going of the birds all the time. We had like over four inches of rain yesterday, which was marvelous. Barbara said, if someone needs another link, let me know who and I'll go find them. I don't have a handy list like Tail, Terry and Gail do. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry that Terry's got COVID too. She's been working so hard to, to um, keep all her consignment shop stuff in stock so that she could take advantage of the Christmas sales. And I'm just hoping that she's not just run too ragged. Yeah, I think it'd be fun to see the birds. And I'm hoping maybe we get some other critters that come at night. We really need to get some water down in the lower property uh, so that maybe we can get the owls to come down. And I know we've got raccoons and possums um, that come through. But we've got... Um, a barn owl box and we really like to get some water down there. However, I know that the more critters that come through, the more chances that Zoe's going to go bonkers. She's gone. The skunks, the skunks are the only ones I don't care about. <laughs> I would really rather her not deal with the skunks. She, she got skunked not long after we moved in. 
But if I could get the camera set up right at the bird bath, you'll be able to see the, the hummingbirds that I, since I gave up my nice camera, my Nikon, um, getting the hummingbirds with my phone is more difficult. But if we had the cam out there, it would make it easier. So I was looking at my all my unfinished projects for the year and not beating myself up over them. Instead, I was just feeling really, put a warning on the videos with possums. Oh, why do possums, are possums not a good thing? Or is that gonna be a trigger word for people? I wouldn't be putting um, the videos on my YouTube channel. It's just gonna be on Facebook. I can barely do the channel I've got. <laughs> ah, back with your earphones. Nice, Sue. Did Fiona sneak in? Hi. Hope you had a good holiday, Fiona. Oh, you're just not fond of possums? Yeah, they're very helpful in the garden. We have them around quite often and probably more often than we see them. They are not attractive looking critters. <laughs> I'll say that. But they aren't as destructive as the raccoons or the rabbits. Yeah, so I've got, um, I was looking at all my unfinished projects and thinking how wonderful it was to have done so much work this year. I didn't have to beat myself up over things that I didn't get finished because I was just so happy that I have so many things that are right there at the finish line. I just have a lot of bead work to do. Yes, they're very clean. They do get, I think they must have um, quite a smell that goes off because they really set the dog off. She's, she's gotten one once before. Uh, I mean, not killed it, just, you know, gotten, gotten one and done the little death shake with it. And then it, when we left it alone, got up and toddled away. Okay. Yeah. Just pick the right thread or the yarn. This is a, one of the silk wool combo yarns that I got and I'm just in love with. Really just mm, yummy, yummy, good stuff. Oh, you're scared of animals other than birds and dogs. Oh, that's, that's hard because then you have to be wary when you're going out and about. <clears throat> Do you live in the city, Joanne, or you're, you're not, are you in the country? Hey, Kathy, happy holiday to you. I've always um, loved animals, sometimes a little too much, you know, got myself into trouble with with horses that were more than I could handle, but I survived. And dogs, I guess I had a couple dogs that were maybe a little more than I could handle too. You're in the city. Okay, so then you don't have to deal with them maybe quite as much as some other people. All right, I got a thread that's gonna bug me. How big are possums? Um, kind of like a large tomcat. And I wanna thank you guys. Um, you have a lot of two, yeah. <laughs> You're right. In the city, there's the two-legged animals that are just as scared. You know what? They scared me so much when we lived in, uh, go to work, Riri, going to lurk. Um, when we lived in San Jose, the two-legged crit critters are the ones that really scared me. Fiona said, finish the last mince pie, so it's back to old clothes and porridge. <laughs> no more indulgences. Yeah, we really ate a lot of good food. My husband made um, a choco flan for Christmas dessert and we indulged greatly. 
Barbara said, we had a family of skunks living underneath the house one year, had to wait for all of them to leave the nest and one by one covered up the crawl space openings. Yeah, we were having troubles with the rabbits, um, which I mean, I like the rabbits, but there were so many of them multiplying under the deck that, you know, they were just eating all the plants. And so we needed to limit their access. And uh, we got the under the deck part blocked up. And now we just have, you know, some of the rabbits that come through, but they're not nesting under there. Hey, Michelle, how lovely to have you here today. Hope you had a good holiday. <clears throat> oh, Barbara said, Fiona, I finished the pecan pie from Texas and a coffee cake that I made. Sad to see them go. <clears throat> I used to love pecan pie. We indulged also just before Christmas in some chocolate from our favorite chocolatier here in town. Oh my goodness. So, so good. So this just makes the circle a little bit more interesting. Uh, you were missed, Michelle, but you know, you can only be in so many places. You absolutely can't do everything all the time. Sorry that December was a rough month. Hope things are doing better. Anne said we had groundhogs living under our deck. Big furry termites. Oh, wow. I never thought about that. Yikes. I guess we must have, I don't know, I guess groundhogs must be around up here. Occasionally we see a chipmunk, not very often, but, um, <laughs> oh, Barbara's got another coffee cake ready. Nice. My husband um, picked all the lemons off our trees before the storm started the other day, and we had so many, they're in the crisper in the refrigerator and a big fruit bowl in the kitchen, so I'm looking forward to some lemon goodies both desserts and, and entrees. You're fascinated by what I'm doing with the rings. It's a very simple way to really dress up a ring. And we started playing with circles on this little piece, just kind of experimenting. It's a nice little way just to do some samples of things with circles. And uh, they're a fun way to get an impact. I had started a Pinterest board to uh, just like look at circles and see what I thought about them and decided that I wanted to play with them a little bit. Uh, let's see, are the rings specific to this type of stitching? Oh, I'm just thinking outside the box. Hey mouse, these rings, um, the, the one that I've just about covered up, I don't think I have one that's unused out here was actually just a little plastic ring that you would put on your electric toothbrush to identify, you know, like the different colors. Hey mouse. And then the um, the gold and the silver ones are just like like keychain rings. You know they separate. I gotta decide. Do I want to? I think I'm just gonna go ahead and use up this thread, make it nice and thick. And so over here, I started filling them in, and I'm thinking on this one I might not fill them in. I don't know. I don't know. I just needed something that I didn't have to think on too much because my brain is already ahead on a whole bunch of other stuff. <laughs> I mean, last night when I was in bed and I was thinking, okay, I'm, I could work on that. You know, I didn't want to do beading today on, it seemed like the beading is kind of boring to watch. I mean, I know though you guys are coming for the conversation rather than what I'm doing. No, because what I did is I, uh, Michelle said, if I stitched just part of the ring and left the other parts exposed, would the stitches move? Um, I don't think so. If I stitched only, you know, like the satin stitch or the couching stitch around part of that ring and tied it, whoops, and tied it off, I think it would be fine. And that's an interesting thought. I might do it on a plastic ring sometime. Negative space is always a good addition, yeah. And, you know, it's just a matter of tying it off on the back side to make sure that the, the stitches wouldn't sti wouldn't slip around. Um, well, the, the needle is threaded and I don't want to do any knots there. So I'm just going to go. 
Hey, Liz, have not seen you for ages. How are you doing? My goodness, I hope you're well. Ah, oh, Mouse said I made sure to make it a priority to get me some Susan time this week. Are you guys shut down at all this week, Mouse, or are you working? Just kind of trying to zip my way through this. And I know, you know, it's not that it has to be fast. It's just, um, I think, yeah. And if you had like um, an interesting ring or you had something, other interesting shapes, um, I have a whole, shoot, I should have brought them out here. Um, I've got a whole like collection of things that would be interesting to couch down. You come for the chat and to see what you're making. Okay. Thank you, Michelle. Yeah. And depends on what fabric you're using, what you're stitching it on, what uh, textiles you're using to stitch it down. Um, coconut rings are really nice and they give some really neat uh, looks if they're exposed, I like to just kind of couch them down, you know, like maybe with three or four stitches to hold them in place. So this is more than I need on here, but I'm okay with that. You could also, okay, let's do that. This is a good idea. All right, let's just take one side of this and I'm just going to use up the rest of the yarn in just this one spot. Yes, circles are kind of new to me. I just, um, I had to study them for a while and see, did I like them? Did I not like them? Oh, you're forced to use paid vacation days or your employer is forced to play, pay you special overtime. Oh, that's yuck. Yuck, yuck, yuck. My, my, um, I shouldn't say issue because it's not an issue. The thing I had to think about with circles was, um, were they too perfect for me? But the way I stitch them down, they're never perfect. Fiona said, coconut rings are a type of cookie over here. Oh my goodness. <laughs> they could be over here too. I just know that I ordered, when I ordered some beads, I saw coconut rings and I had to get more. And Sandy is with us. And I hope you had a wonderful holiday, Sandy. And the grandkids are properly spoiled. So I don't know. Oh, we'll see. We'll just see. I don't know how I'm going to feel about this being weighty on just one side, but I'm going to try it. Because if I really hate it. Well, making an actual, using an actual ring is a whole lot easier for me than trying to stitch around a line. Okay, I see what I like. If you guys can notice, but it's kind of, it's just a little blocky on that side. And with this little bit of yarn that I have left, I'm going to see if I can do the same thing over here. You know, color combinations, um, Joanne, thank you. She said, even though I don't do much stitching, I'm inspired by the color combination Susan uses. And I appreciate that because I think we underestimate ourselves with the different color combinations that we could come up with that we like and we need to kind of play with it a little bit um and i'm starting to kind of try and keep track of color combinations that really speak to me they may not speak to everybody but they speak to me fiona wants to know sandy any christmas cookies left oh yum i didn't get any christmas cookies nobody did any cookie baking just dessert baking Ah, Sandy's got the flu and it's kept me in the love shack sequestered away. That's not good. That's not good. All right, this sort of changes the shape of the circle, which is interesting. Barbara said, I just thought I could make rings of different sizes by tracing through my circle stencil with a micron pin. That might be the next page I practice my new HIMI gauche. Yes. Absolutely. I used to do that when I kept my stencils. I would trace um, a lot of designs through there. And of course, the micron pens are awesome. All right. I'm just using that last little bit. So this definitely gives it a different look. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Wait, do you guys see this up close? I like it. Ah, come on. 
I just need one little knot. All right. Let's see if I can get it to focus. See how it's a little weightier on each side? I kind of like that. It's a different look. Um, so let's see, what do we want to do here? So I could, I'm thinking this one doesn't need a lot. I might just come, all I did was tack down the top of each circle, but I'm thinking maybe just couch it down a little bit more. This one, I feel like it needs something, but I don't know. Do we put French knots in it? Do it? Maybe I just do a bunch of um, split back stitch in there. That might be kind of nice. I could do a split back stitch with this same color. Or should I stay in the gold? Ooh. Trace circles onto fabric and stitch over them. Yep. Absolutely. Or if you have circle stamps. You know, you could um, stamp it with the same color as your fabric, and then it would sort of fade into the background. It's not a spiral. It's each of these is an actual circle. I just took the um, wool, and I made a little circle, and then I made another circle, and I just tacked it at the top. And so that's all I did is I just kept going around because a spiral, they, it wouldn't actually be just a circle. Yeah, I could do some bullion knots. Hmm. Maybe bullion knots go on there. Okay. And then we've got these guys. Kind of like to do some split stitch. Okay, maybe what we're going to do, oh, these are short pieces. All right. These are a whole bunch of um, thrums I got. If you have felt, you can die cut circles. That's true. Hey, Angie, how are you doing? Hope you had a good holiday. I didn't bring a bullion needle over here, so I'm not going to do any. Oh, and this one will be a long one. Okay, make a liar out of me. Uh, so these are some thrums of wool I got uh, from a weaver. I think I have enough to do that. Okay, let's. Um, do I want to use a big needle? Sorry, hemming and hawing over what needle. If I can get it through this one. Bullion tendrils over the gold would turn it into a flower. Ooh, that would be nice. Still a spiral with the sides touching. You're right. Just have a th Tim Burton theme going on with a crazy eye. <laughs> Be interesting to put a couple mental rings through the wool that you wrap and then couch them down as you would have circles within. Oh, that's a good idea. Maybe what I'll do is get some more of these little circles because I got them in different sizes. And the thing is, you wouldn't need to couch them all down. You could also, since these guys connect, you could link them. You know, they're like jump rings, so you could link them together and then have them kind of dangling. I have something I want to try on this gold. I had a great holiday. Thank you, Angie. Yeah, there's a lot of things, you know, if you start looking around um, your space for different things that you could couch down, they don't have to be, you know, ring shape. And the same thing, um, you know, we've got that link in the group with Philippa's uh, wonderful, okay, it doesn't want to go in there. That's kind of what I was thinking. Um, this was just a single strand of, this is a, uh, wool and uh, a merino wool and silk yarn. This is just going to be, um, a wool and I'm going to use a double strand of it linking and yeah, there's just so much you could play with it, but you know, Philippa, um, has a great blog post and I linked it in the group on encrusted embroidery which is another video I'll do here shortly. And so if you start looking around at things that you could put under your fabric, so picture if I had my fabric over this and I was stitching around it, that would be the encrusted part of it. And you start looking at other things. You could do keys, um, 
blocks. I mean, you can just do all kinds of stuff with it. I'm, I'm rambling here. I've got like a whole little box of stuff to do some uh, buttons. I got to figure out something to do with buttons or just toss them because I have too many and I'm not using them. They're just taking up space. Okay, let's get this one threaded. This is a bigger needle. That's much happier. And what I'm going to do here, uh, come, oh, maybe I, yeah, we'll see. This, this may not go well if this wool is going to do weird things on me. It has no silk in it, so it can be kind of finicky. All right, and I'm going to, I'm doubling it up. And I'm going to start on the outside here. Now, I may wish that I had done that with just one thread. We'll see. Hopefully not. Gonna watch on the TV and try not to and not chat. Yeah, you can't keep quiet. You need to rest. Go rest. I know toss buttons. You're covering your ears, Lee. I know, but I just I've got my really favorite ones, and I can keep those in a small container to use. But um, I've got too many. I've just got too many, and they're just sitting there, not being used. And maybe they should go to somebody that would actually use them. Because I keep looking at stuff that have buttons on them and thinking. Well, I like to look at it, but I don't like to work with them. So maybe they're not for me. All right. Two strands was not a good idea. Yeah, I might have just like a big old button send off. And I'm thinking this thread was not the best idea. So that's okay. We try these things. It used to be that I would tell myself, oh, no, no, you can go ahead and push through and make it work. Well, I can make it work, but maybe it's not going to be as much fun. And you know me, if it's not fun, why am I doing it? So I'm just going to switch. <laughs> Put the buttons in the store. We will buy. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to end up doing is all the ones. I've got them all sorted out on the island, and I'm just going to keep <coughs> my favorites. <coughs> <laughs> and the smooth topped ones for encrusting. I will put them in the shop, Sandy. I'm going to open the shop back up again uh, next week. Fiona. Susan likes to wind us up about getting rid of buttons. It's awful, but we still love her. Thank you. What did I do with my threader? All right. Let's do some hydration to get rid of the tickle in my throat. Yeah, there's um, more stuff that I'm going through in the, the studio. It's like, yeah, I need to think more about what I want to use, what I'm having fun using, and what somebody else might have more fun using. Okay, there we go. It's like that to absolutely fit in that lip gloss on my finger. Okay, let's try with a different thread. Surprise, that goes a lot smoother. Hey, Barbie, how are you doing? I'm going to have to come back around that outside, but I decided I really want to just get it stitched down. And maybe I won't. Do this stitch all the way around. I don't know. We'll see. I might start it and hate it. Yeah, there's a lot of things you can make with buttons. And I realized I can look at them and I can say, wow, this is great that somebody did that. I was watch, looked at a gal the other day that had done, um, and then there's the dog hair. She, she did like copies of great art, like um, the Mona Lisa all with gluing down buttons. She painted it in the background and then glued the buttons over it. And they looked amazing, but it's like, no, nope, it's just not my kind of art. I am fantastic too. 
So I'm cheating. I'm doing the inside row first and then I'll go around the outside row. Wow. I would say I need glasses or something. Oh, Andrea makes Dorset buttons. Andrea, did you get your new webcam up and rolling and, and is it wonderful? And are you going to be able to use it in our next Zoom, which I need to get set up for January? Yeah, the kitschy stuff, um, I can say that's really interesting that people can do that, but it's not something that I get excited about doing. And since we only have so many hours in the day, I only want to work on the stuff that gets me really excited. So I'm kind of looking at what else I can do. You know, if I sew, if this was a button, you know, I could just do the same kind of an idea and just cover the buttons with threads. What book did you get, Sue? I should have brought my books over here to show you guys. Um, I can't even remember the names of the ones I got. Couple a stitch dictionary that I wanted that was a nice spiral, small spiral one, so I could just have it right by where I was stitching because I then forget. And I got um, a Judith Baker Montano book that I had wanted because she takes your basic stitches and then does different things with them. Oh, I should tell you, I'm doing the split back stitch right now. So you, you just start with a straight stitch and then you come down and you literally split the thread that you just put down, which is why I was trying to use a fatter one. Stitch Fabric Thread by Elizabeth Healy. I think I have that book. I need to just start working my way through my books. So I'm definitely going to have to go back around the outside, but I think what I will do is I will go back around the outside with uh, knots. And maybe this will just be a variety. Okay, I'm liking this idea. And dorset buttons, are those the ones that um, start with like a ring? of some kind and then you can you can do all these little designs in the center of them yeah I can never have too many books I agree you know some of them I go through and I'm just looking at them for the eye candy because I know I won't go through step like um shoot can't even think of the name of them now my brain it's not tired I'm just it's not working shower curtain rings okay Philippa uses shower curtain rings. And I have some of the, um, that's another one for putting down on this sort of thing. I've got the plastic curtain rings. Okay, yeah, they're woven on rings. Yeah, I I want to, I want to do that. Gee, Andrea, maybe um, you have to do, now that you got your webcam, maybe you could do like a button session for us in the group sometime. We can do a room. We can practice if you want to ever do that. Fiona says, not buying any more books until I've read the ones I have instead of flicking through them. Liz said, I put my books up for sale because I had so many. I figure I would enjoy them until they sell. That's a thought too. I got rid of a lot of books. I mean, not arts and crafts books. I got rid of a lot of my mixed media books and I still have more of those. I probably need to... Um, let somebody else enjoy now. But there are not that many in textile art. And, you know, I don't knit. I did buy some crochet hooks, but it's only because what I want to figure out how to do is just, and it should be easy. I just need to practice. Um, I just want to do some like really weird netting you know, wonky netting. So that's just going to be, you know, a couple, some basic stitches. <clears throat> Barbie said, I just ordered a Sue Spargo book and then thought, geez, that's a lot of info in a different direction for me. 
I got the Sue Spargo stitch dictionary because it's a nice size. Um, it's, it's opened up. It's not too much bigger than my hands and it's spiral bound. So if I need a quick reminder of a stitch, it's really nice. But the Judith Baker Montano book that I got, I love because she takes a basic stitch and then does weird things to it. Boy, this would be so much easier with a fatter thread. Mouse said it makes sense that tactile crafty people would enjoy physical books. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, fiction, I read on my Kindle all the time. You know, that's, I mean, every night I read for, you know, two or three hours every night and I'm always reading fiction on the Kindle. But my nonfiction is always, I, I'm always happier with it um, in a physical book. I'm making these stitches way too long. But I'm going to fix all of this with French knots. Sherry said, I used to collect V.C. Andrews books. Philippa said, in one of my Just Because books, the weird crochet stitch down, I did the weird crochet stitch down using the glittery threads. Oh, that would be a good way to use some of the threads that maybe aren't as fun to stitch with, huh? Yeah, I'm, I've just got to um, sit down and practice with the crochet hook. I also got a punch needle kit that I want to play with. Yeah, Kindle or Audible for fiction, real books for art books. It, interesting. It's just the way I think I absorb things. I can't do audio books. I tried and I tried doing podcasts and realized, um, no, I need the physical. All right. So here's something that happens. And this is me all the time because I'm, I did not glue this down. I didn't do any kind of stabilizer. So it's getting kind of wonky and puffy. And I'm not going to worry about it, but if it bothers you, you might want to keep that in mind when you're putting down an applique. Physical books are another art material to potentially hoard. Absolutely, Mouse. Gosh, do you remember? Um, oh, shoot. What did I do here? Uh, and I, now I'm drawing a blank. Oh, my gosh. The big bookstore downtown that closed a few years ago before the pandemic. We used to go down there all the time. That was even when we lived in San Jose. Logos. Thank you. My husband shouting from the other room. Logos. <laughs> Fiona. Yes. She said, I made some um, Sue Spargo wool pennies and then found I liked looking at other people's and disliked mine. They look like guide badges. My sister agreed. Yes. It's the perfection that, that gets me. Um, and that's just a me thing. I can really appreciate the, the effort that somebody else put into them, but they're just not me. Okay. I'm not paying attention. Joanne said, I can't do audio books either. I'm hardcore about books and newspapers. Got to have them in my hands. Barbara said, I do library to go for audio books. I'm trying to keep from buying art books. <clears throat> Some of the art books, uh, I have no choice but to get on Kindle because they're either out of print and they're like $200. Um, and so I go ahead and get them. I think it's my Jean Draper books I had to get on Kindle. And they're just not the same as being able to hold them in my hands. Although it is nice on my Kindle to be able to enlarge the photos. All right, so this is really turning super wonky, but you know what? It's Super Susan. It is absolutely my thing. Completely wonky. So if I was really trying to be perfect about it, I would have um, gotten my glue stick out before I tacked it down. Barbie said, I got the Sue Spargo book off Amazon. I'm pretty sure that Impulse Buy will be going back. <laughs> Oh, Barbara said, thanks to Janet Young's enabling, I bought the Illuminated Letters workbook and that will keep me busy for a while. Yep. Mouse said, I rationalize books the way I rationalize stamps. I think this is not consumable and it's reusable, but I only use a portion of my stamps or books. Well, for us, you know, for years, I mean, like 15 years, we would drive from San Jose over the hill to Santa Cruz to go to Logos. That was a date date for us. 
is we would drive over um, to Logos. We would spend so much time. We didn't even have to buy anything, but although we always did, but just wandering the shelves, pulling the old books off the shelves, um, just seeing what titles were out there was just so enjoyable to us, you know, and then we'd go have dinner and probably hit bookshop Santa Cruz and stuff. So there's just so many pleasurable memories associated with the search for the books. And for me, it goes back to, you know, of course, you guys all know that, you know, I was a writer for 25 years before I turned to art. And when I was a kid, there was a used bookstore a few blocks away from my house. And I, you know, I didn't have the money to buy the books, but the owner of the bookstore didn't care if I sat in there every day. And I would just lay on my stomach on the floor in that bookshop and look at these old books of poetry that were, you know, from the 1800s or so and the uh, delicate fly leaves, tissue paper fly leaves. And just the idea of going back in time to read those old words was just something to me. Boy, I'm looking at this wonky circle and thinking a couple of years ago, I would have stopped. I would have stopped and said, this is ruined. And now I'm like, oh, look at the things I can do to fix this. I like that. I like that kind of progress, that kind of growth, internal growth that I'm not stressed about it. I can handle it. And and the worst of the thing is if, if I can't handle it, if I couldn't figure out a way to fix it, it's also not the end of the world because this is not brain surgery. There is nothing that's going to, you know, be devastating to the world if I do a piece of stitchery and decide that it's just a complete mess. I got um, a book, a calligraphy book, but it's all about calligraphy marks that I just looked at it and thought it would just be so fascinating to see if I could replicate it in stitch or just look at make mark making for stitch a little bit differently. All right, this is, yeah, I don't normally go back and fix it, but I used to beat myself up about it so much, Liz, it was crazy. All right, so it doesn't, you can't really see from here. It doesn't lay flat and I don't care. Um, I just need to decide. Now this would be a good use for my wool, but I'm gonna cut it off so that I only have one strand. Andrea, oh my goodness. She said, I've always loved reading. I've kept a list of the books that I have read since I was a kid. Wow. I can't even, I wish that I had done that, but I read so much and so fast. Um, I forgot what it is on my Kindle this year, like 150 books this year, maybe more. Oh, ooh, is that not going to, well, we'll see if this is going to work. Not an intentional encrusted circle, Joanne. It just happened that way um, because I didn't get the, this is silk. So it was just really flimsy but I think I'm just going to let it be. I'm just going to do some French knots around the outside. See what it looks like. Mouse says there's really something about the potential knowledge in books. I really resonate with angels hanging out in libraries. If anyone has seen city of angels. Seems like a good place for me for the angels to hang out. Yeah, I would love to have a list of all the books I've read, but. I, yeah, I can't even imagine. And when I was writing, oh my gosh, when I was doing research for um, nonfiction books, the books that I read, oh my God. And then I wrote some history books. I mean, I think I probably did, you know, 50, 75 books just for one history book. I can't even imagine having them all. It'd be lovely. All right. So, and these are going to be, you know, wonky French knots, loose French knots. Ah, great question. Michelle said, change of subject here. Wondering if anyone picks a year, a word for the upcoming year. And if so, what words are you picking? Great question. I think mine is probably going to be something like grow. Grow or stretch, something like that. What about you, Michelle? Do you have one? 
So these are purposely really wonky, not tight French knots. And watch, I say that, and then one of them comes out nice and tight. Okay, Liz, it was lovely to see you here today. Take care. Happy New Year to you. Barbie's word is nest. Oh, is there a story behind choosing that word? Barbara said, this year my word has been wonder. Haven't picked a 2023 word yet. Actually, I'm going to change my mind. I don't think it's going to be grow. I think it's going to be explore. When I think about the plans that I have for the year, I think explore might be a better choice. Margaret said, my word for 2023 is consistency. Oh, that's a good one. Michelle said, I always pick one, but this year I... Uh, I don't. Usually I know by now. Either it keeps coming up or I am drawn to an intention. This year I'm empty. 2022 was curiosity and it served me so well. Mm. That's a good one though. Curiosity. Barbie said, just working on feeling comfortable in my home and making it more expressive of me. Oh, that's fabulous. Yes, your home should express you. Andrea, and it should be your comfort zone. It could be, it should be the place that you go to to feel safe enough to, to do all the things that are you. Andrea said, in craft terms, my word is random. I can't do random. Ah, oh, but you do precision so beautifully. So beautifully. Sue said, I've never heard of choosing a word. I always set myself a challenge. Oh, interesting. You've taken off, Sherry. You take care and have a happy new year. Boy, this thread is not cooperating. Word expressing my home, messy. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the current state of mine all the time, too. All right, this thread is not cooperating. So I am going to stop here and I'm going to okay. cut it out only because I do want to be kind of consistent around the outside. And I think this will be a thread that I'm just going to couch down. And that's okay. And give me a chance to take a look at what else I have here that I might want to use with it. Pick my needle up before I misplace it. All right, let's see. I didn't do that many of them. They weren't making me happy, and I didn't want to try and go around the whole thing and fill it in. Probably just need some nice pearl cotton. Uh, let's see. Maybe I'll maybe I'll change colors. All right. If I'm going to do French knots around the outside, I could. I could use the blue, blue, green, whatever you want to call it. Michelle said, Sue, one little word started quite a while ago, maybe 15 years, and other businesses and artists all also ran with the idea. I like it better than a resolution. Yeah, I agree. I could do one that's more blue. But I kind of feel like I want to stick with the gold. All right, I might need to, I don't have any other of that gold thread out. So I think that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some other gold um, pearl cotton. It's a little bit lighter weight to go around the outside. All right, let's take a look at something else. What else might we do? Uh, I'm, nothing is moving me at the moment. On this one, I'm thinking, again, do I want to stay in the same color families? Gosh, this is a pretty color. 
All right, maybe we're just going to tack this down just a little bit. The minute I can't do something, I crave it. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, I can get like that too. Luckily, I'm a little bit better when I'm on camera. It's like, okay, no, we're going to stick with this. Um, how many? I don't want it to be. I want the focus still to be on these circles. I just want to tack them down just a little bit more. Lemon bars are good. Michelle, are you behind us in the... Uh, the stream, you might need to leave and come back in. Not sure. It's going to be a slightly different color. Hmm. It's not, this is more blue than I thought it was. Well, fudge. Okay. Let's figure this out. Maybe we come back over. We go into these things. Another circle to join the two together. Maybe on this one, something to join the circles but I wasn't liking those colors and I have limited threads out here right now. These are definitely more in the green family. So I could stick with this. Now, considering this is going to be a book. So I like to keep in mind my Sue Fiber it said not really a resolution this year. It was to make a jumper spun from local fleece and dyed with local plants. Did you manage that? I could just do stitches. Joanne said, I never picked a word for the new year, but I think mine will be silence. I'm challenging myself to rein in the thoughts that continually make noise in my mind. Oh, that's a good one. All right. Evidently, I am stuck on using this yarn because it feels so yummy. I mean, a silk and wool combo. I tell you, it is lovely. Michelle said, I found some rings and circles that I'm going to stitch over. I'll post a pic of what I found. I have a variety. You can also use bottle caps. You know, so many bottle caps. My poor needle threader is tired. Only a simple knit and very colorful. Nice. Michelle said, I always think I didn't accomplish a lot at the end of the year. Then I go through my photos. And when I see all the projects I worked on, I feel so much better about my creative process. Yeah, I was doing that because I'm going to do a video on all my, you know, almost but not quite finished stuff. And that's kind of what excites me. All right. I'm, I'm thinking what I'm going to do. Is this going to work? Let's see. I want what I'm here's what I'm thinking. I'm going to start inside this circle somewhere, come around and land inside this circle. That's what I'm thinking. And it kind of bugs me that these guys aren't down very well. So, And maybe, okay, hmm, what stitch are we going to do? Let's just do a very simple running stitch. Michelle said, I have been considering pause. I find if I pause in almost every situation, I find a resolution, whether it's a project idea or a social situation. I need to pause more. I react too quick. That is a really good reminder for all of us because I find I am the same way. When I was doing a lot of public speaking, uh, I would find that I did so much better if I would pause before, you know, especially if I didn't have a speech that I was speaking from, I was just kind of speaking off the cuff. I always did much better if I just would pause before I would go on to the next thought or somebody answered, a, asked me a question, I would pause before trying to answer. And of course, if we have a uh, negative response to something somebody said, it's always better to pause. All right. Um, let's see if I can just gather this a little bit as I... I don't know that I'm going to be able to get this last little bit in there, though. Let's see. Did 
Just trying to see if I can pull the sari ribbon a little bit more around. And I might not be able to. Uh, kind of just wanted to see if I can go down anymore. Maybe we'll go sideways. I also need to live in the pause instead of trying to not feel, not think it out. I think that word is important, but maybe I'm just too scared to adopt it for my word. Wow, that's some deep thinking, Michelle. Um, should we do the things that scare us? If not now, when? Pause is good. It has the same effect as silence. Yeah. All right. Hey, Gail. Glad to have you here. Kids just left. We were talking about whether or not we're choosing a word for the year. This is really unthought out on my part, so I'm not sure if I'm liking it. But we'll see. Huh. It feels wrong. And I don't like it when I say that, but it does feel wrong. It's not exciting me, so it's going to come away. I'm going to, I know I'm, I've done more unpicking today than I normally do. But I think before, I, I like the idea, but I got to do something else first. All right. I need to first... See if I can make this a little more circular. Yeah, I know. I've been, it, it's been an uh oh kind of stitching time, but it's okay. And. Pause and silence sound good. Yeah. In today's world full of noise and chatter, pause and silence can be uncomfortable to some people. It, it's very hard to think about pause and silence, I think. And you're, you're very right, Fiona. Um, because then you're if you're left with just your own thoughts in a situation, I mean, you can't push that off onto somebody else. You have to feel, you have to be in the moment. All right, I'm going to try something else here. It's very uncomfortable for me, said Michelle, but I feel like it would be real growth for me if I'm ready. If I'm not, the intention won't work for me. All right. When in doubt, French knot it down. <laughs> and then I can do my stitches. That's kind of what I'm thinking. If I make a little cluster of knots here, I'm going to change where I'm going. Joanne said, I love chatting with you ladies. You always give me food for thought. And this is the only place where I can express my deepest thoughts and feel understood. I am so glad to hear that, Joanne. And yeah, really thoughtful, intelligent conversation happening here. As always. You guys are always my Wednesday happy. Michelle said, love that, Joanne. Fiona said, to us, we are pause and silence people. It comes with slow stitching. True, but, but to be comfortable in that, I think a lot of people come to slow stitching because they need to learn how to slow down. Barbara said, pause and silence are two great words for me this year and next. I'm working hard to live in the present moment. And those two words, along with breathe, help me do it. Sue Fiber Art said, I agree, Fiona. I love silence. Kate's back. Tanya McGuire called. Well, you got to talk to a friend, right? Two rowdy grandkids all day. That's awesome. <laughs> Maybe that's why I'm not a stitcher, Fiona. Ah, Michelle. 
but you got a stitcher's heart, I think. Kathy um, Barber wants to know how's Tanya doing? Has she been unwell? Living in the present moment is such a wonderful thing to learn how to do, but it is something we have to learn how to do. I couldn't do it when I was younger. I spent way too much time living in the past. Riri said, or I'm sorry, Lee said, I'm struggling with a good word. I'm too tight with my art, striving for perfection, but yet the word loose could be misleading. Kathy said, Tanya's doing well, still on pain meds and can't do anything, but sounds good. Oh, she had rotator cuff surgery. Ouch, 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 ouch. So what would be another way for Lee to think about um, freedom with her art without using the word loose? Perfectly imperfect. I mean, that's two words, but still you can adapt it to work for you. It's not a matter of being loose, though. I think it's a matter of um, it's a freedom. It's a uh, it's a letting go. It's an uncoupling. Angie said, my word for the last few years is believe because as creators, we have to believe in ourselves and our vision. Yes. I was talking with another artist yesterday and we said, you know, we need to not be afraid to step into our own light. Relax. Yes, relax. Um, you know, we're, we're very quick to praise other people's work and we stand in the shadows of our own work and we need to not be afraid to step into the light. It's okay to shine. Fluid, freedom. Yeah, the word freedom is a good one. Fiona said, yep, understand that, Gail. I love visiting my sister who lives in rural Scotland. You know, it's quiet when you hear the tractor two miles away. Wow. I think freedom is the word for Lee. Breathe also works. You know, if you let your art breathe, you're not trying to constrain it, unrestrained. Um, okay, I like the, I always like a cluster of knots. My son and his fiance are planning their wedding and I'm wondering if they're going to try to afford to go to Scotland for their honeymoon. I know that's where she would love to go. She was saving air miles. <laughs> Fluid is another good word. You know, so most of us have just experienced a lot of growth these last few years, um, especially like with the pandemic, we maybe dove more deeply into our art. Oh, simplicity. That's a good one, Sue. She said, maybe I should choose sim oh, simplify. I think I try to overcomplicate things. I know I try to overcome. I don't try. It just comes naturally for some of us. Gail said, I'd love to visit Scotland and Ireland. I don't remember what part of Scotland my future daughter-in-law lived in. But I know it's the place of her heart. All right, so now the question is, I like that, that fixed that. Do I still want to come join the circles? I kind of think I do. Simple Susan, I know. <laughs> Fiona, you know me so well. All right, so now I'm thinking just maybe little stitches to come over to join the other circle. Liking fluid, maybe unsomething, uncomplicated, un restrained. Sue Fiber Art said, Scotland is beautiful. I've been to Butte and Orkney. Bye, Lee. Take care. Michelle said, I really agree about COVID leading to growth. I think I learned so much about myself from taking that 
break from the crazy pace. And then I learned more when I returned to it. Yep. Sorry, Lori. Lori, I'm sorry. Thanks for not correcting me. But I'm sorry I messed it up. All right. I'm just going to, we'll see how this looks. Yeah. I mean, we were already very introverted and we discovered that um, we were okay with continuing to be the in introverts that we were. We're very happy, you know, here in our, you know, mostly bubble with each other. We see some people, but we don't need to see them very often and we need to recover afterwards. Joanne said, yes, I meant to touch on breathing. It is a wonderful way to relax and even heal. I try to make conscious breathing a part of my day whenever I think about it. I want it to become a habit. Yeah, it's a good one. It is. And if you're concentrating on your breathing, you can't let all the crazy thoughts take root in your head, or at least it's more difficult. COVID was a teacher in so many ways. You are so right. All right. I'm liking this. Fiona said, loved visiting Orkney, just the occasional tree, but lots of ancient buildings. Oh, wow. I think that would be cool. All right, let's see if I can. Yeah, I should be able to zip these along. I'm going to just kind of go wonky on purpose. All right, have a little bit of a plan there. Okay, thanks for part posting that again. Barbara's posting a link to the New Year's Streamathon that Lori is organizing. Lori is Paint Girl Lee. And there are streams you can go see all day long. I'm going to try and pop in and out of some of them. Michelle said, when I pick a word, I put it on my wall and in other spots I will see until it becomes routine for me to think about. That's a very good idea. All right, so now what I need to decide, do I want to go along, I'm liking this better. I think I'm gonna come through the circle and come up over here. How do I feel about that? Yeah, I think I like that. So there should be something for everybody at the streamathon. Let's see. Uh, Michelle said, I never asked Susan, are all these small circle pieces just for fun or part of a bigger project? They are part of a bigger project. So they are each pages in a book. So I have three pages and it's because I did, there's a video um, doing a, a showing, I don't have it right handy, but it's a little blue book that was just three pages. And I wanted to show you how I constructed it because it's something that some people might like to see as a different way to put together a slow stitch book. And I didn't do that. So I thought I would make quick ha 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 pages. I know, go ahead, Fiona, laugh hysterically. Um, Quick, easy, simple, not me. Well, e I do some stuff that's easy, but they never seem to be simple. It's like, okay, it's like these pages here. It was supposed to be a lace book, but you can't really see the lace behind it, which is why I'm going to have to do another one. But I absolutely love them um, because I couldn't keep it simple. Hey, June, how are you? Happy New Year. Hello, Shoshi. Happy New Year to you. Many blessings. I'm just doing some simple stuff. But, I, you know, this is probably the simplest cover I've ever done. And yet when you look at it, it's not simple. You're just smiling at me. Good. But I did this because I wanted the feel. And I know I'm not going to put any beads on this because I wanted just to feel the texture. Um, that could almost be my word for next year would be texture because that's what I have planning to explore is so much texture. 
Yeah, I, I love, thank you, June. I love the lace pieces. I absolutely, they're the perfect size. They're like five by seven. So they are the perfect size to um, hold in my lap and work on. And so I'm really, um, for those of you that came in later and didn't see, here's what, what's going to happen with this. I'm going to add beads to these three pieces. And then there'll be something in between them and the back piece. And then it's going to fold up like this. So thank you. I'm, I'm really, really loving this one. But I also, I meant to leave more of the lace showing and I meant to do it all in just this cream. So, um, you know, I'll have to do another one. Oh, darn, more stitching. Yeah, texture, texture and art and experiences and relationships, you know, to go deeper and to go on many levels. Thank you, June. I would like to say it would be color, but I have already learned that color, you know, I'm, I've learned my palette and I'm okay with having my palette being what it is. Uh, but texture, there's so much I want to explore with texture. Some of you might have the book um, Manipulating Fabric and there's, I need to just dedicate some time to going through and doing some of the, the experiments I see in there. There are so many things that you can do to get texture. And with me, I want to do it with um, with fabric, fiber, and thread and stitch. Thank you so much, everybody. The one thing I didn't figure out is on these little circle things, what I'm going to use for a cover. But I think I might just, it's close enough, because I these were like some small dyed pieces, but... Uh, I just want to be able to show the stru structure. You just got that for Christmas? Or you'll probably work your way through it faster than I will. So let me know if there's something you think particularly interesting. I just realized I don't want to do a lot on the sewing machine. I want to do more um, with other things. And that's fine. I can do it with a hand stitch. You know, if you can do it on the sewing machine, you can do it stitching by hand. Because that's what women did for many years before they had sewing machines, right? Let's see, where would it make sense to try and, it's not like I have to end someplace, but this seems like if I make my way over here, it would be good. Have I finished the other piece, the one that had the, or oh, let me see, I can, I haven't completely finished it. Is this the one you were talking about? Um, again, I have to add beads. I might do some more French knots on it. Oh, you said it had orange and green on a beige background. Wait a minute here, orange and green. Oh, the little one, the little circles? No, I don't know what else you mean. Uh, and then there's this, nope. I don't have orange, so I'm not sure what piece you're thinking. Oh, this one here, so it's the red. This one, do my hands hurt after all the stitching? No, because I have learned to take breaks. The first one I showed, you mean, the oh, I'm confused. <laughs> So confused. I haven't finished anything um, for a while, and that's okay. <laughs> Looks orange on your screen. Yeah, no, there's um, the big one that I just put on there was mostly red. I, you know, this has been a real okay, the red one. Okay. Yeah, I'm what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a few more French knots to this and some beads. And then this one's going to become a vessel. This will become a vessel. And it's really, it's shades of red with a little bit of greens in the background. And I'm just, I had a lot of fun with that one. 
but I was patting myself on the back and saying, wow, you know, I, I did finish a lot of stuff. Yeah. It looks like another color. I know. And I, it's very strange. Um, I'll have to see if I can do any color corrections when I take pictures the next time. Cause it's definitely red, like a dark garnet red. But I'm patting myself on the back because I have done a lot this year and the next week or so is going to be a lot of beating to finish things off. And then hopefully can get them in the shop soon. But this is my, um, you know, this is what I do all day. I, I'll stitch for an hour or two and then I'll stop and do something else, clean up a mess play with the dog, go outside. And then I come back in and stitch. If I stitch nonstop, that is when I have problems, but I have more pain when I stand nonstop on the hardwood floor in my studio. So I have to balance that more than anything else. Okay. Let's see if we can just get that one down. All right. That's a good place there. All right. Yep, I like that idea better. So now I think I'll, I'll do some more French knots here. And I might zigzag around with some more. I might just do little clusters of French knots where I've tied that down. And I think, I think bullion knots would be good here or maybe here. I might see if I have, well, I know I have some more rings, but I might find some different rings. Hmm. Uh, maybe I'm just, I, I'm liking this yarn so much that I'm just going to keep using it. And I have a huge, you bought beads, Sue? <laughs> and I just ordered more beads. It's terrible. Um, but I didn't want to have to run out when I was in the middle of something. For me, now that I found, you know, the, the size and the styles that I like, it's like, okay, so I can buy them, you know, in the colors I know I want to use. Sue, uh, Barbara said, Sue, you must have needed beads. Yes. Need versus want, right? Gail said, I just bought a lot more six strand floss. I got all excited for a minute when DMC sent me a, an, an email about buy one, get one free, but it wasn't for individual things. You had to buy the sets or something. And that didn't excite me nearly as much. All right. So let's see what we can do here. Just because, you know, French knots are so much fun especially if I'm not putting the pressure on myself to make perfect ones. Yeah, it's not what I want, Gail. Yeah, exactly. But it's probably a good thing, right? Because, you know, when they send me that 35% off coupon again or something, I will definitely be back. But I realized that um, while I bought a lot of pearl cottons, and a lot of the silk wool combo yarns, um, I actually don't have a lot of floss. <laughs> so that's good. Of all the things to have to, you know, to want, not have to, to want to stock up on, at least floss is one of the less expensive ones. And I might actually be able to get some of it, you know, locally or uh, Joann's at least online. We don't really have a good place around here to buy floss. He also said, I've decided to work up a couple of kits that I have. One is a set of pillowcases that are stamped for cross stitch. Oh, fun. I remember we used to iron that purple transfer onto um, pillowcases way back when. And I have a huge needlepoint painted canvas of a lighthouse scene. Oh, wow. I could never get a hang on, on needlepoint because my tension... Uh, was always so irregular and to make it look nicely, you really needed to have nice tension. Uh, 
So something like this can be as simple or as complicated as you want. And I really am, Fiona, going to try and keep it simple because I'd like to get the pages done in the next few days so that I can show how to put the book together. It's not like it's anything super unique, but my people, well, <laughs> for me, it was a tension deal. It might not be a tension deal for anybody else, but for me, I would pull some of my needle point too tight and then it would just look uneven. I just, uh, I think I'm probably just too impatient to do some of that kind of stuff, which is why, you know, I had to get to the point where I could embrace the wonk. Oh, what did I do here? Come on. I love this yarn though. I tell you what, um, uh, if I ever find, I, I bought all the colors that I could find that I wanted to work with, but I will always be looking for more of the silk wool and also a, uh, silk, um, yak yarn was also really, really nice. There we go. And this is so soft. Boy, I made a mess. All right, we made a big old knot there, so we're going to have to figure out how to clean it up. Maybe wonk should be the word of the year. <laughs> yeah, I want a t-shirt that says embrace the wonk. Oh, I can put one of those in my spread shot. I should do that. Embrace the wonk. Do we need a picture? I don't think we need a picture. We just need the word, right? In really wonky letters. All right, so I'm just tacking down. Embrace the wonk. Okay, I'll do that. It'll be on a t-shirt, on a mug, on a little zippered case. Fiona said, Gail, it's much easier to do on a frame. You get less distortion. I got mine from the charity shop. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, one of the things um, I need to look at some after Christmas sales for is I want to get one of those scroll frames. I tried one of the plastic snap frames and it's not working for me. But for working on, thank you, Andrea, for the tip, for working on small pieces to have several of them on the frame at once. Michelle's word is hope. All right, just fixing my stuff here. It's a little, little different than I wanted, but you know what? We're going to go with it. We're going to let it go. Hey, Lorna, Merry Christmas. Gail said, Fiona, do you mean a frame instead of stretcher bars? Barbara said, did anyone else see the small flap that Carolyn Doobie got when she published a stencil that had a mistake in it? It stenciled no regrets. Oh, regrets. <laughs> wow. I did not see anything about that. Boy, Lauren, now it'll be time to take down all, what, five, seven, 12 of those trees. Must be pretty cold and snowy up there. All right, let's see. So it just looks like wonky knots. There we go. Fix, fix the wonk. All right, so I think that's a pretty good stopping point. I just need to decide, do I want to just leave it like that or do I want to come? I might just come around and do more little stitches joining me to French knots. I don't know. We'll think about it. It can be called either, but stretcher bars are better. Shame you don't leave closer as people give me things. <laughs> that would be fun if more of us live close together so we could trade things back and forth. I have a friend coming over Saturday, and that's just what we're going to do. Barbara said, you know, she's the queen of oops, outstanding opportunities pre presenting suddenly. She did it on purpose. I thought it was great. <laughs> Only 10 trees. Wow, that's still something. Lorna said, if we're doing a word for the year, mine would be one for more product and less lazy. <laughs> hey, Jamie. She says, that's just it. It was not a mistake. She wanted it to say regerts. <laughs> All right, Michelle, I hope you find a word that speaks to you. 
All right, people, I think this is a good stopping point for me. I got circles started. I'll play with them a little bit more, and then I'll do the video putting the book together. But I think today I'm going to finish beating that triptych book so I can get that together. Yeah, it would be great if we all live close together. Happy New Year to everybody. Make sure you check out the link that uh, Gail posted for us about the streamathon. All kinds of YouTubers are going to be streaming on New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, something for everybody. And I will see you guys next week or see you over in the Facebook group. And if you are a secret squirrel, hey, thanks for hanging. And I will see you guys next week. Bye-bye for now.